This is Rebecca Jernigan, your tour guide into discoveries. Coming to you live from the heart of America to around the globe via the World Wide Web, satellite, and podcast. Let's journey together into the realms of the known to the unknown in search of enlightenment, knowledge, and truth. Right. Well, thank you so much. We were all a little confused. But anyway, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are on this beautiful planet Earth. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you are listening to Journeys with Rebecca right here on WolfSpiritRadio.com. Also being simulcast on Revolution Radio at FreedomSlips.com, both Studio A and B. So welcome, everyone. It is really, really great to be back here again. And I want to welcome all of you. Some are new, some are familiar, and this is an exciting night. I, as some of you may have known, I was supposed to have started last week, uh, but due to the passing of my brother, um, we held it off for a week. And I want to say thank you to all those wonderful people for, first of all, for your sentiments, uh, the beautiful cards and emails that I got in regards to the passing of my brother. Such compassion and love. And, uh, for that, I thank you. I'll take a deep breath now. So I have a few more announcements before bringing on my guest, and you will all know him because he has been here before, and we've done quite a few shows with him. He's a lovely man. Um, but right now I want to remember that both stations, Wolf Spirit Radio and Freedom Slips, are totally listener-supported. So any donations really make a great difference. It allows all the wonderful show hosts and their guests to continue to provide the best and latest information. And, of course, it's not mainstream, so it's all good. So if you can, a dollar, five dollars, whatever you can donate, all of it helps. And thank you in uh, in regards to that. I also want to remind everyone to not forget to go to my website. That's journeyswithrebecca.com. There you can check out the archives and the upcoming guest and their topics, any classes or workshops that I'm offering, as well as setting an appointment for your reading. And on the left side, you can always sign up for the free newsletter. It's free, it's confidential, and it's on the left sidebar on each page that you visit at journeyswithrebecca.com. And now, there's a lot more to say, but right now we're going to get to my guest, Tobias Biharel, I think I said that wrong. I know I did, as a matter of fact, and he'll correct me here in just a minute. And tonight we are exploring the mystical side of a psychic, time-traveling, alien, communicating healer and exorcist. That was a mouthful. This is going to be an open and personal conversation as Tobias delves into the deeper parts of who he is and what he actually does every day. And together we're going to explore the future of our planet from the perspectives of those whose everyday lives revolve around hidden knowledge of the past, psychic phenomenon, remote viewing, medical intuition, alien technology, communications, and yes, he's even going to be talking about exorcisms. And we're going to get into a lot of back and forth conversations uh, tonight. And if you have a question Please remember to place those questions in the chat room. You can find that at both Revolution Radio or Wolf Spirit Radio. Make sure that those questions are all in caps so that those can be posted and we can answer those right here for you tonight on the air. Thank you all again for being here. Uh, I am just absolutely so excited to be back on my Monday night time slot. And again, I cannot thank Mr. Um, JP enough for holding the light in the fort for me. Uh, until I was able and capable of coming back on a consistent basis. So thank you, JP, for all your love and your kindness Sweetheart. and your support in this. I seriously. was I was just about out of juice. I really, I was just like, oh, please, no one more show, no one more show. And so it's really, <laughs> so it's like it's like I've been holding my breath for three, four. When how long has it been? It's like four years. It, it's been it's been about three years. It's been about three years. God. Yeah, since I got sick. So, yeah. Thank you, my friend. I, my heart, I'm, I just, 
My heart, I just love you. Well, somebody's got to do it. You know, there we are. We're, we're, we're here on the other side of, of something quite magnificent, you know, is building again. Oh, yes. Nothing and short that's what of we're magnificent. we're talking about tonight, too. So this is going to be fun, right? Fabulous. And, uh, yeah, it's nice to hear you, brother. So I will, I will step back, um, and, um, go and make some tea and, uh, allow you to, uh, have your show. Oh, well. A well-deserved night of going and sitting back and listening for a change and drinking your tea. I love it. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, Tobias, welcome. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks. It's a good to be here again. It is good, isn't it? It is really good. It's good to be, it's good to be heard. It's good to talk and it's good to get all this information out there. And it's, it's just fabulous. We've had kind of a crazy day. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, as, as now NC is still carrying on, so I, I I don't feel disappointed that my crazy day is still not, <laughs> you know, that it cleared up and it's all smooth, because otherwise I really wouldn't know what to do. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you you don't really expect normal when you've been in this world for a few years. So uh, what, what can we do about it, right? Well, so here's what you know I've said for years. So welcome to the new normal. This is the new normal. There is mm-hmm. no consistency with it, right? Uh, there's no business as usual. There's no, uh, making plans and those plans that you can follow through without having some kind of a blip in the screen on it, right? Yeah. Well, it's really interesting because people are redefining normal. They really are because, um, not only that, but they're, they're trying to figure out what's not real in a lot of ways, right? So, I mean, that's part of the subject that you and I have been sort of discussing in little ways recently. The fact that, there's so much information. There's so much information available on all these subjects on the, you know, on the internet, on radio, television, and any of these social networks. And, and, and it's such an abundance of information that in many cases people don't know what's what anymore. They just don't know what's going on. It's the, it, the energies themselves are because it is new. It's, it's, it's all new. The energy is new. We're not, it's not like we're revisiting uh, an ancient past. What we are is in a different time, in a different space, in a different place in space. And I've talked about that now for about a year, you know, that it's really here. We are sitting in literally new energy. And yeah. none of us have any points of reference as to how this works because there is no history behind it. Mm-hmm. I like that. Vanessa says consistently inconsistent. Very right. <laughs> exactly. It is. It's exactly people, right. People have a hard time with that because what we want, I think deep down most of us want stability. And it's it's so hard in, in light of everything that we're just discussing there, it's hard to feel in uh, stability, right? And that that's a, that's a whole other topic because I was just talking with a friend of mine recently about this same matter. And the fact is that in, in, mo- in most cases, it's actually instability that allows people to create passion, right? So it's kind of a contradiction there with what we want, but because we want a bit of stability and a bit of passion, but at the same time, they sort of uh, don't go hand in hand sometimes. So it's fascinating. It's fascinating to look at it like that. It is. It's absolutely fascinating. So let's get back to the topics at hand a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, because I promised uh, you and I promised myself that we wouldn't get too far, too far off the beaten path, although it will take on its own uh, kind of formula, as it were, um, because it is what it is. I mean, we, we aren't canned. This is all going to be um, right off the cuff, but we are going to have a conversation and so let's talk a little bit about Tobias for a little bit. And, and before I do that, we have an announcement that Tobias and I will be making tonight. And at some point we'll get into that, but we're going to leave that for a little bit because what we want to do is really get into the idea of exploring the mystical side mm-hmm. of a psychic, time-traveling, alien-communicating <laughs> healer exorcist. So as as... All of that is being said. We had an amazing session yesterday. Yes. Um, which gets right into the time traveling, alien communicating, psychic awareness, and mystical healing and communication, right? 
Mm-hmm. The only thing it didn't explore was the exorcism part of it, which we'll, we're going to talk about that. You will. You're going to talk about that specifically. Mm-hmm. So I want to get back to the topic for a minute and then tie this in and let you run with it. We were talking about things being not the way that we remember them. In other words, the new normal. Things don't work like we thought they should. Uh, we can make plans and those plans usually get changed or certainly rerouted, right? No matter what we're doing. So I do a past life, a timeline class in which I take people back. Well, they take themselves back. I just lead them to the door and they walk through that door. That door is up to them to walk through, right? Um, in regards to getting into touch with another timeline, um, whether it be on this planet or not on this planet, of something that they need to be aware of, they need to work on, they need to heal, they need to recognize. It can be a trauma thing. It can be not a trauma thing. It can be an informational trip. And without exception, everybody in that that attended that class had some very unique, not of this earth, so to speak, experience where they went, what they discovered about themselves, what they discovered about who they are, and what they're made of and what they need to do, including yourself. Yes. So start there. Well, it sort of goes back into the, um, the sort of the title of tonight's show. I mean, the things talking about time traveling and, and psychic abilities and remote viewing and all of these things, exorcism, you know, angels, demons, aliens, all of these things, they sound I mean, they sound so phenomenal to to most people. Now, granted, obviously, there's people all over the world that are, are familiar with these topics and have their own experiences every day. But the the larger part of the population, um, honestly, can can have a hard time connecting with any of that, even as a reality. And I think that's because so much has been lost through time, or you know, all of these different reasons where we can't remember things ourselves. Um, and in so many cases, people don't have the direct experiences themselves, right? So, I mean, when we talk about the past or timelines or past lives and things, um, we're talking about something that is a huge time period. I mean, if we consider the fact that we have lived for like a massive amount of time, I can't even begin to imagine. Um, just imagine the information and experience that's encapsulated within that time If true, if real, (laughs) again, if it's even real, um, think of all the information that we're not accessing if we're not uh, capable of 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 knowing how to do it, right? Right. So, I mean, we have uh, a lot of different groups of people. Um, We have people that are, again, completely familiar with these things, and we have other people that are completely unfamiliar with it. In fact, we have people that would reject it right out. Um, and I understand that because you need to have experiences. You need to have direct experiences. I mean, how do we know something until we actually experience it? Going back to your timeline regression, that's a perfect example of experiencing it. You know, I just remembered actually after um, that we did that uh, with you and, and the other people that I'd actually done that with you several years ago, probably in 2011. And, and at that point, um, I was so different. I, I, I just realized after we did this one the other day, how different it was than the first time several years ago. Because at the first time, I didn't know if I was imagining things or making things up in my head or, or I couldn't even focus, to be honest. I couldn't even focus mentally, uh, very well to follow even your instructions during it, right? Um, I did have a really cool experience at that time, but I didn't know, you know, how much of it was valid. And then I compare that to what we did just on Sunday. And, uh, wow, what a difference in such a few short years, like a serious difference. And it just reminded me, um, it gave me some insight into everything that I do now. Because I work with, you know, all of the things that I, you know, I do on an everyday basis are just so natural to me now. But to, to experience what I did with, within the timeline regression the other day, just put it into perspective. I mean, I access different things that really surprised me, 
really surprised me, Rebecca. And, you know, I think that's the most interesting part of that because when you all are involved with doing it, I'm actually doing my own work as well, as well as being present. It's kind of like a split screen. And some of the things that I found out, I find out about myself every time I do one of these is, is pretty amazing. Um, it, what it does is it opens up a door so that when I'm done with the class, then that energy kind of hangs out there and allows me to go in to explore it myself. I'm still amazed by what, what I pull out and what I can see that I wouldn't have necessarily thought to sit down and focus on as a meditation or as a, any kind of a protocol that way. And that's what's really neat, not only just about my classes, but about anybody that can, anybody that does classes like that, that allows for that kind of exploration, uh, within themselves. So that, because the journey is always from within. It's always from within. Always. So, yeah. and, and that, I, and then I want to talk to you about the session that I had with you. Mm-hmm. And I think this was what, about a week or so ago, a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. And, not only was it about, and you can talk about this <clears throat> more completely. I'm just going to kind of highlight a few things, and mm-hmm. then you can kind of fill in the blanks. Um, there's been some things that this, like this nagging thing, that's kind of hung around me for years, and I literally have not spoken, not spoken to, to anyone you. about it, not a thing. Mm-hmm. And yet, during our session, when I was in with you in this healing space with you. Um, you were able to see that. Yeah. And you put a name to it and you put a description to it. And I thought, well, okay then, how special is this? Mm-hmm. That's really special because it's always hung out there. It's always set there with me, Tobias, and I could never quite see what it was. And I think for, for, for me, for myself, it was probably because I was, I just didn't understand what it was. And by talking to other people, uh, through the years, many people through the years, um, I was probably prohibiting myself from being totally open to seeing that because mm-hmm. I realized how paranoid it looked. Right. 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 Absolutely. So those are things that, you know, you and I deal with every day. I mean, we look at these things and we like you look back and you go, wow, okay, well, I wasn't looking at that stuff before, but now how different is that? And yeah, so and this is a, this another thing. This this new energy here is supporting the uncovering of some of these things that we haven't looked at within ourselves and our environment and who we really are and how we can really operate. Mm-hmm. So maybe you can go into a little bit of that. When you feel like that, that, that fits in with how you want to continue mm-hmm. on with more explorations of the, of this. Well, that's, that's really a, an interesting way to put it. I, I realize that in so many cases, there are things in our environment that are actually available to us. Things that we can access or see or sense that, that we actually don't only block from ourselves, but we're prevented from seeing just by dogma and and, and, you know, different beliefs that have been put into our minds, right? So it's through experiencing these things that, that people can really, you know, open up a, a big doorway on that. But anyways, I just want to say, here's the thing. I'm always aware, um, with the sessions and people I work with, um, I'm always aware that some of the things that you do, some of the things that I do every day, um, are really out there to some people, right? I mean, I mean, of course, you're talking to the guy that came out of the closet, the alien closet, basically a couple of years ago as this <laughs> person that suddenly knows how to speak what, you know, eight or ten different alien languages fluently. So I, I'm, I'm completely aware of how ludicrous some of these things feel and, and seem to people. But the, the fact is, these things are very real. And, uh, when you get sort of immersed through the gateway of into, into this world, I mean, you start opening up to so many things and senses within yourself. So, I mean, what I did with you um, is sort of the culmination of years and years of uh, practice and experience and, and research that I've done through that alien language gateway, right? So, I mean, people um, people really don't really understand what it is I do unless they've actually been, you know, 
party to the things, you know, you know, been in sessions with me or something. Um, then they're like, oh, wow, this is interesting. This has nothing to do with languages. Um, because again, the languages were just a gateway and they open up access to other information and other things and experiences that are really the, the most exciting part of the focus of my work, right? So the other day, what I was using with you is a quantum energy device that was literally scanning through your body um, from a distance. I think you're probably a thousand miles away from me. And, uh, and we're looking at health things, energetic things, emotional things, and DNA, uh, DNA um, your spine, like all of these things that are, again, they're, they're completely natural to my everyday life. But uh, the reason I keep bringing up tonight the fact that, that so many of these subjects are, well, alien to, to the majority of people on the planet, but so common to some is because they exist. These, these, these things that we use every day. I can't imagine not being able to use these, you know, technologies and, and abilities and energy devices and, and all of the things that I, I've implemented and learned over are through that gateway that I, I passed through several years ago. And, uh, and this is what we used with you the other day. And, uh, it was quite an experience. Um, as for what you were saying about the things that I was able to see, Again, even that's a culmination of, of, of everything, uh, of everything that I've ever sort of, you know, learned through, through, uh, my studies and, and practices. Some of these things are available in, in the real world, so to speak. And, and other things are more, you know, of the unseen sort of abilities and, and, uh, practices that go over the ages, right? So I, I connect these things together. Uh, with quantum devices, energy devices, psychic abilities, crystals, everything that I've, I sort of work with is all connected on some level. And they, they, they make each one as an individual, uh, practice, uh, stronger and better because they can all be connected to the same sort of, you know, the same sort of string. So, uh, yeah, I was able to scan through you and do a lot of things there. What did you think of that? <laughs> Well, and, and you know, uh, there was a couple of times when I could, I, I felt, uh, I, I call them little surges of energy. It was, there was nothing uncomfortable about it. I wasn't wearing any equipment on my side, so I want people to understand that that's not what, that's not how that happened. Um, it's no different than you and I sitting here having this conversation now. It's pretty much was the same thing other than, you know, we weren't hooked up into a radio station, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you uh, pulled in your software program and you started it and it scanned and the information it gave was also confirmation of uh, some of the things that had already been done and diagnosed uh, through traditional medicine on my behalf, which you knew nothing about. Yeah. Um, what they found and the machine found it, which I, I've, it was, a, it was a good, um, confirmation for me that your equipment that the quantum machine actually works because yeah. there's no way you had this information. I mean, we speak, uh, we speak quite frequently, but we don't speak on those things. We speak on, you know, what we see in the world, what, you know, how things mm -hmm. feel, uh, you know, mostly, uh, meditative stuff and psychic stuff and you know spiritual things etc and so forth we, that's the things that you and I discuss as two people do so not much about the rest of it and so right. it was really it was really a, a a good experience because there was things that the machine did and you said okay and so you would you would expound on some of it uh from your own level and viewpoint and those are the things that really uh, tied it all in. So not only did it just talk about the nuts and bolts of things, there was also the psychic intuitive side of you that was also being brought in. And I think that's where it becomes more of a whole thing and not just a piecemealing it out because it is a whole thing. And, I, and we've said that, I've said it, you know, there's mm -hmm. not one thing of us that's separate from another thing of us, whether we're talking about our mental state, our emotional state, our spiritual state, our physical state. One thing affects the other, affects the other, affects the other, because we're all inclusive. Yeah. 
we're not separate from any of those things. There's not one portion of us that's separate from the other portion because then we would not be functional. That's not how we're designed. Hmm. We're energetic hmm. beings. And so the quantum thing that you do is an energy thing. It's very yeah. cool. It's really interesting because what you just uh, related there um, is exactly what happens oftentimes in the world. They try to separate science from spiritual modalities or science versus energy medicine. And, I mean, there's so many people that feel, you know, deep down or intuitively or even scientifically, I guess. They, they feel like th- th- there's something real to the energy healing and things like that, but they're pushed off of the path because they're, they're made to feel silly or there's, you know, all a million different reasons. But, I mean, and there's a lot of different modalities with the energy healing too, Reiki and other associated practices. Um, but so often, be, you know, because they're ridiculed or blocked or prevented from making a real impact because of various mechanisms within society or the so-called matrix, you know, they, they make them feel silly. So they end up doing one of two things. They, they accept They accept the limitations and they do as much as they can or they give up the practices entirely and then go towards more accepted practices that are familiar in the world, right? Right. So from my, from my perspective, I don't like that uh, breakdown or separation in them. I think that both, both of these choices are limiting. So when we're pushed to suppress anything in favor of another, I think we lose something in, in the balance. So to me, the more productive wisdom is to blend the both of both worlds. You blend the science and the less known sort of mystical sciences as I consider them. And that's when we really begin to see progress and new ways of taking back, you know, the things that, that again, most of the world probably refers to as mystical or, or, you know, pretend or fantasy, right? Right. Um, so I always, I mean, I mean, I embrace all of these things outside the accept, accepted paradigms, and it takes courage. It takes courage for any of us to look at these things, right? Again, I, I know that because I came out of the the alien closet, as I said, with the languages. I, I know it takes courage. It really does. But and um, it, it does. It takes a, it takes a tremendous amount of courage, and it takes a, as much of courage as that is to. Uh, tell people that you're clairvoyant or that you're psychic, um, mm-hmm. because they have a misguided understanding. A lot of, not everybody, but a lot of people have a misguided understanding of what those terms mean. And I think those, these terms have been kind of, I don't know, um, they've been changed and, and what people really think they are isn't what they really are at all. Uh, right. because being psychic is kind of an umbrella term for different levels of natural talents that's available to anyone and everyone if they just go in and explore what their own unique talents are and learn how to develop them. They're, they're a skill. They become a skill, um, that you can use in your daily life, like the gut instincts people use and the intuition that people use. Um, you know, that term gut instinct, uh, is interchangeable with intuition, right? Mm-hmm. And, but if you tell somebody, oh, my gut instinct told me, and you'd say, well, that's your intuition, they look at you like, oh no, I'm, I'm not, no, 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 no. It's a gut instinct. You know, they get, they, you, people get caught up, they get caught up in the semantics of it, and instead of looking at it, that it is part of who we are. It is a yeah. natural part of who we are. We're designed this way. It's not for the gifted few. Right? It's exactly. for people to decide and to hone in and to, and to try different things. And I tell people, try different things. And, and I, I give them the tools that they need to explore on their own because they are the ones that have to do this, not me. They have to do that. Just like you had to learn how to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Or and they you give open up. The door. Oh, well, yeah, and they do. They give up. Mm-hmm. Because they don't have a mentor. They don't have teachers or they don't have anybody um, they don't have anybody that they can talk to or they feel comfortable with, they feel safe with yeah. to talk to because the last thing you need is somebody bearing down on you and pointing a finger or laughing at you or poo-pooing you away or whatever they're going to do or just dismiss you is even worse, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. And that's part of, that's a huge part of the program 
That's a huge part of the program. This world is a very strange place sometimes, and not everybody likes to acknowledge that. But there's a huge system built within this sort of society that ridicules things that, that really somebody somewhere doesn't want people to be able to get. And I know that sounds very conspiratorial, but I think most of the listeners are well accustomed to that reality. So, I mean, when it comes to talking about using energy to control, you know, to affect real physical changes in the mind or the body or, or, or anything like that, you know, it's made, people are made to feel silly. Um, you know, even when I started to realize that I can access languages from God knows you know, thousands and thousands of years ago in my own conscious mind, you know, people began ridiculing me. Trust me. Trust me. I remember I'll never forget saying to, to, to one of my close friends back then, all those years ago, I, I'll never forget saying, oh my God, I think I can remember languages from a long time ago. The eyes rolled into the back of the head, and so come on, Tobias, that's ridiculous. And you know, I, I remember making a conscious decision, a conscious decision not to allow the opinions of others to stop me from my, well, my journey, my investigations, because, um, because there was something there, I could feel it, right? And it's no different for energy healing or, or mind technologies or, or any of the stuff that, again, that, that's common to me every day, but so uncommon to the world, right? So, I mean, gosh, there's just so many avenues to explore with that because it's all connected. I know, I know, thank goodness you can keep us on focus within your, your, your radio shows every time because there's so many pathways that I go off in my mind because they really are all connected. It doesn't matter if we're talking about energy healing or, or, or ghosts or, or entities or, or curses or spells or any of these things. They all have a common tie. And that common tie is energy and the mind, right? So, um, I know it's not the easiest thing, again, this is why so many people don't have a clue what I actually do. Because there's so many aspects to it, it's not the easiest thing to explain. Right? So again, we get past the languages, we get into technology, we get into information that I've been able to sort of restore within my own mind and my own reality from from things from the ancient past to things that you can purchase off the market today that are all different versions of one another. So what I used with you the other day is a quantum energy device that is literally connected through software on a computer that that has thousands of naturopathic and medicine um, uh, types of medicine. It has information integrated into the software that, that cross-references diseases, uh, illnesses, germs, viruses, worms, all all of these crazy things that the, the, the medical reality deals with. But what makes this different is it amalgamates two different worlds. It amalgamates the science of the technology of computers and, and, and medicine, but at the same time, it literally amalgamates also into it the science of energy. So literally, I have a little box that sits beside my computer, which has the software on it. Inside this box is a piece of organite. It's an energy. Uh, most people know what organite is. It's something that gives off energy, chi energy, or it gathers chi energy at least. This organite is literally integrated into the circuitry that's plugged into the wall and plugged into the computer. What does that mean? That means that we've taken a modern device, a computer, and we've literally plugged it into the quantum energy field. So it doesn't matter if you are in California or Arkansas or on the moon or Saturn. We can still connect through the energy field this device to you, and we can scan you. We can find information about you. Very detailed, as you alluded to there, Rebecca. And not only that, but it's so exciting to me because it also has integrated into it technologies with the, the frequencies. So it, it's got frequencies of all these different medicines, these natural medicines in it, that you can literally push a button and through that chi field, 
you can send that medicine to the person at the other end. So it's not just a device that scans people. It's not just a device that gives you information, but it's a device that can balance things and fix things inside a physical reality, that being your body. And uh, if that's, you know, if that's not exciting, I don't know what is. And, it, and not only that, but this absolutely is space age technology because, again, depending on where you're coming from, this may sound way out there. But the fact is, this is the type of technology used in other worlds, uh, spacecraft and things like that. It's just a technology that most people don't even know exists. And and you know what's even more exciting about that to me is this is only one technology. This is only one technology that I use every day. And there's just so much more. So, I mean, it's very, very exciting for me to start talking about these things because uh, because they're powerful, they're real, and uh, they can really change a lot of things for people. They can. And, you know, um, I, I want to go back to a remark that you made. You said, and it sends the the uh, medicine. Yeah. Now, what you mean by that, it sends the energy signature of that medicine. Obviously, physical medicine cannot go through. We haven't perfected that where you know here pop it in and you know it replicates on this side we haven't quite gotten there yet but you know i don't i don't see that that probably isn't something that couldn't happen i mean uh we have to look at where all this information comes from if we start going back and we've talked about this and i've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people here recently especially over all of these um old movies and uh, TV shows and things like that where they were giving us what is already available to us, but what, how did they do it? They do it in a, in a way that it becomes entertainment. So what happens is that people don't take it quite so seriously. Um, right. they don't give it its value that it really needed. Uh, look at where we're at from the Star Trek show alone. I mean, anybody that has ever watched a Star Trek, seen the communicators and the uh, little scan that they did for the healing to diagnose people and et cetera and so forth. All that stuff is available. All of it's available. Um, you know, it, and it's, it's, it's there. It's always been there. The medicine has always been there. But what happens is Western medicine, what we call Western medicine, the pharmaceutical companies and the, and the traditionally trained uh, medical doctors have have become more than those that work with uh, the natural energies and the natural uh, holistic um, medicines of plants. Of in, you know, as I've said before, we're biological beings, and when we put synthetics in us, there it's not a healthy thing to do. Sometimes we have to do it, but it should only be a temporary measure until you can either a fix it or b find something that can help cure it not just treat a symptom, but to cure whatever it is that's going on. And sometimes you have to go two or three levels deep. It's not just a physical thing. It can also be a spiritual thing. It can be a past life thing, a timeline thing. There are so many reasons for what we call illness or disease or sickness, right, Mm -hmm. Um, that we have to look at other aspects of what's coming in, as I've had to do with my own self, with my own um uh, health as it went down uh from 2012 it just went down really fast it spiraled down and mm. i had to dig my way back out and um you know i'm finally at a point where i can actually function and do things and i i have energy and i i don't have to sleep every two or three hours you know <laughs> i don't have yeah. to stop i mean and my brain is actually functioning again but i had to dig myself out of a really really deep hole and when you get to a point that you, you, things in your world just isn't working. It's time yeah. to look at other aspects. And that's what you're asking people to do when they come to you. They say, Hey, I need some, you know, assistance here. What does your quantum machine say? What does that say? And then not only that, but you also, um, kind of accentuate that with your own skills, your own yes. tools, your own communications that you have with whomever or whatever. And I'm, I feel very fortunate that I've been able to 
have the, my guides talk to me in such a way that they've directed me in a very specific and they've assisted me in, in the same types of situations. Uh, certainly not the way that yours does because you have that quantum machine and you have that, I don't know, that link up into the whole physicality of a, of a human being on all levels when mm-hmm. you're, when you have them, uh, on the, on the phone with you, uh, when they're, in a session with you. So it's, it's, it's amazing what we can do. Well, you know, it's really cool because actually I was just thinking about it. I've only had this specific device that we're talking about. I'm not even a very long time, but I've done all sorts of these things, uh, similar things for many, many years. Um, I know we've talked about a lot of these things uh, or some of these things already on different shows that we've done. Um, but I mean, I was doing very similar things with a quartz crystal in my hand linked mm-hmm. to my brain, and then scanning people remotely with my mind. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, you know, I mean, now I can not only do that with a computer, but I can also connect through the same system. Again, these things are linked the way they work. I connect my mind through the, the energy uh, the energy field um, of the crystal. It amplifies it. I link it to the machine. And there you've got two things that are like ex- exponentially powerful and, and helpful, right? So not only is the computer giving me information, but I'm seeing things in my mind through scanning remotely. And certainly uh, um, that's um, part of the effect that you experienced the other day because uh, the computer didn't specifically pick up the, what you alluded to. That was something that I picked up through being connected to that energy field and being able to literally remotely view. So, I mean, again, that's just sort of a little bit of insight into how these things are linked, right? Um, these practices and, and these technologies. So a lot of time people don't have a clue what I'm talking about if I say, you know, energy technologies or, you know, that type of thing. But really what I'm talking about is the chi energy that's part of every living thing and the, 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 it's the power source for our abilities. These, these extraordinary um, abilities that people talk about. Um, so I mean, <laughs> so I've, I've learned to do it without the actual physical technology here. So when when that came into my reality, that just made things even better, right? So it's it's very, very exciting. And, I mean, you just talked about how you went through a long period of suffering through different things and and had to fight your way back. Well, you know, I, again, I won't get into it, but that's something that I've talked about other times as well, where I literally had to fight my way back to life um, from a serious, serious uh, spinal injury. And so, I mean, when I talk about these things and I I go on the Internet and shamelessly self-promote these things sometimes, I'm doing it out of real passion for life, a real passion, because, you know what, most people, it's it's so sad to say, but most people at this time simply do not even have access to these types of not just technologies, but the information that we're talking about. They, they don't know. They don't have access to it. You know what? They're not talking about it on, on, you know, NBC. They're not talking about it on CBS. They're not talking about it on, you know, out in the doctor's offices. These are things that are not quirky, silly, new age, you know, quasi spiritual things. These are physical, real things. And, uh, part of what I love doing, and, and I do this pretty much in every session I ever have every day, uh, people, I, I, I mean, through these things and these practices and these technologies, I create real experiences for people. Real experiences. Because, again, I go back. Look, I've always been skeptical. I've had to be skeptical. And I know you use a healthy dose of skepticism in everything you do as well, Rebecca. We have to do that. Right. And it's, especially when we're talking about things that are so serious, like serious illness in people. That's not something to fool around with. Or if we're talking about, you know, let me flip the coin. Let me flip the coin on the other side. What if we're talking about spiritual entities or things that people, most people can't even see with their own eyes? That's some serious stuff. Like, sure, I mean, I'm, I kind of, you know, make fun of the, the little title, the you know, alien speaking exorcist. But the truth is, these are very, very serious issues, both health and those types of things that affect a lot of people, a lot of people, there's people in this world all over the place 
that can't even access the health they need, not just for, you know, diseases and illness, but for spiritual afflictions, the, the unseen things, you know, these things. And, and it's, all of it is much more common, much more common than most people would ever believe, you know. Oh, so, abs- I have to agree. And just by my clients alone, I, I, and I've, I've been really blessed with the people that, that felt like they could come to me and ask me those questions. You know, this is what's going on in my world. What can I do about it? Yes. And then they feel comfortable enough because it, you know, it's like, you know, I can't talk to my sister, my mother, my father, my brother about this or my next door neighbor because they don't understand what it is that I can see. Yes. And I mean, the fact that most of the world doesn't understand how it's even possible um, doesn't mean it's not real. You know, it simply means that most of the world is not educated on the technologies, on the abilities of, of the mind, the, the power of the mind. So um, let's talk a little bit about let's let's talk about because you've you've used the word a lot here tonight is alien. You use the word alien. Uh, you've talked about your languages. So in, in when um We've, I've had you on before you even started doing the ET languages, I think is what you used to call them, right? The ET mm-hmm. languages. Mm-hmm. And then I had you on and we did a couple of shows on the ET languages. And these ET languages is what's allowed you to access information that would not have been available to you if you had not opened the door to that, if you had not dismissed it if you had dismissed it it you would not uh, you, you would not be, be who you are today right i'd have been toast absolutely so the you know every step is a builds on the step before you know every everything that you do is a is is a, a building and a you get more complete picture of your more puzzle pieces to your own picture right Mm-hmm. And um I, I talk about puzzle pieces a lot because I think that's what we're trying to do, all of us, is trying to take that piece of a puzzle and put it in there and go, oh, I see where that fits now. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody else, but it makes sense to your puzzle that you're working on, which is an internal puzzle, you know, how you view the world, how you operate in it, how you operate within yourself. Yeah. So these ET languages, you know, that's still something that I know that you hold very near and dear to your heart. And... um at some point we'll we'll get back into talking about those a little bit but one of the things that you, you I want you to kind of clarify for the audience another terminology throughout tonight was exorcism so let's talk a little bit about your definition and how exorcisms work in your world in Tobias's world sure i'd be glad to that's one of the things in my work that is the most it's among the most humbling work that I do because, I mean, I just alluded to briefly there that there's so many people that experience these types of things in the world that have to hide it as best they can from the, the other people in their lives. Uh, of course, that's not always an easy thing to do, neither, depending on the degree of, of what's happening. But, or healthy. Um, or healthy, exactly. But the fact is these there's a lot of targeted people People targeted uh, different ways in this world. Um, sometimes it can be technology from different groups and organizations. There's a lot of things out there that people use against people. And, and then you get into the other aspect of it, which is spiritual, interdimensional, entity-type things that are doing the targeting on people, right? Um, again, it's a subject that is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people don't even want to hear the first word about it because they would prefer to not deal with it almost um, almost too much for them. And I respect that. But in my world, I like to be as aware of as many things as I can because otherwise I feel vulnerable, right? So I don't like to feel vulnerable. So that's why I've sort of gone through the years and tried to learn all of these associated types of things. Um, again, even with, uh, you know, exorcisms, even with interdimensional things or entities, it's still, again, connected even to the technologies and, and the practices that we've already talked about tonight. Because you need to understand energy. You need to understand the sort of unseen things, um, the things that most people actually can't sense or don't consciously sense, right? Um 
So, yes, I, I have a lot of people uh, around the world that sort of migrate my way um, that have been having these issues um, that, that don't uh, have an easy time getting help with them, right? Um, it's, it's such a humbling thing because usually when people get to my doorstep, um, there's a magic number. They've literally, there's an average, most of them will say I've been through 35 different healers or different, you know, practitioners of this and that. Um, I've spent a fortune, um, and you know what? I've just, they've never been able to help me. And, uh, that, that alone tells me, my God, these, not only have these people suffered tremendously, um, but there's, it's just a hard thing to access. So just like the technology, I don't know, I don't even know who I would call up if I needed an exorcist for myself, right? So, um, Yes, these people come to me and we, we, we look at things, I look at things in much the same way as remote viewing, uh, that I did on you the other day. And, uh, and a lot of these things come up from, you know, alien things to, to entities, interdimensional things, the most crazy, crazy things you could ever imagine come up, um, on an ongoing basis in some of these sessions, uh, uh, it's, it's fascinating. All right, All right, everyone. Welcome back. And uh, this is Journeys with Rebecca. You are listening to it on WolfSpiritRadio.com, as well as Revolution Radio at FreedomSlips.com, Studio A and Studio B. We welcome all of you back. Uh, my guest tonight is Tobias, and we are having uh, quite a discussion on all kinds of different topics as it relates to uh, healing, psychic abilities, uh, exorcisms, time travel, et cetera, and so forth. So, Tobias, uh, welcome back. Thank you, Rebecca. A uh, couple things that I, I want to take this time first. There's a couple questions. Well, there's a question and a comment that I want to address but I also want to, you, you told everyone that you had an announcement to make. So I'm going to lead off with that here at the top of the second hour that we're in. And we talked a little bit, um, and, and I've expressed it a little bit that, um, I had had some, uh, medical issues over the past few years and I still have a, an occasional day or two where I just am not with the program. And on those days, uh, Tobias will be co-hosting the shows for me, and um, I'm just excited about that. So we've left JP off the hook yet again. I can see him swiping his brow and going, <laughs> woo, cool. <laughs> I ran out of words, Rebecca. I just, I, you know... I, I, I say it a lot, but, uh, you know, there, men are supposed to say about like 2,000 words a day. Women are supposed to say about 10,000, right? And so my, my, you know, I'm, I'm more of a solitary guy. So I speak like about, a, what, you know, a fifth of that. So you know, doing a show, it takes, it uses up all my words for the week. <laughs> you know, so I can, I can only do two, two one hour shows or something like that or one two hour show. So I, you know, I've already done that on Sunday. So, I've, you know, blown, blown the whole wad and, you know, I've got nothing left. So, <laughs> so I've, 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 I've had to, uh, you know, uh, often I've, I've just said, okay, universe. You know, you've put me here. Deliver unto me a guest. <laughs> and it happened. It would happen. You know, well, people there would you come. go. People would come. Uh, but it, it was, well, it's been edgy. It's, I have to say, it's been edgy sometimes. Well, I know you've done a lot of years of that, JP, so it's uh, it's really kind of cool. I, it's really nice for me to be able to support everything that you've both done and to support you, Rebecca, um, okay. going forward. If, if there's anything I can do... Uh, for sure, I'm going to try to do it because I've always appreciated um, the information and the access you have to to a lot of different things with uh, with your shows. Uh, it's just a real a real privilege to be able to sit in and guest host for you, and um, when you're not able to make it, so thank you for that. Look forward well, to it. Well, thank you for wow, what a, what a beautiful way of saying it. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. All right, so there, that's the big announcement, guys. So that's, that's cool. And I'm, I'm extremely grateful to both JP and Tobias. So without you both, I don't know what I would do. I, I would miss you guys. I really would if, 
yeah. So we're gonna, I'm gonna stop there because then he can feel that little emotional bug coming up. And boy, <laughs> I can feel the tears welling up in your. Uh, yeah, in your yeah, tears. I get that easily. Yeah, yeah. I'm not apologizing for it, but you know. Um, <laughs> okay, so here was a question that I missed. It came in earlier in the night. I hope that the listener is still on. Um, and it was a question that said, China banned time travel and went after full on gong practice practitioners who practice a form of Tai Chi called Wu Gong. It is claimed that if one practices Wu Gong, that one can alter time, time travel. Have either of you heard about this? And actually, that is so interesting because I have. Um, it was just a little short, um, piece that came in, in, in one of my days where I was just kind of perusing and one thing led to another. And I thought, well, now how interesting. I wonder what's so threatening about this particular form of, um, Tai Chi, Wun, Wun Gong, I think it's pronounced. I'm not quite sure. I'm not Chinese, so I really don't know. Um, that, that they would say that it altered time or time travel. I just think that's fascinating. And uh, I'd like to put that on my list of things to get do some more research on and maybe find somebody to come on and speak about that if anybody has the knowledge of that. Um, but that would seem like a really cool topic to get into as to why and what this particular Tai Chi method is so scary to the uh, Chinese government. I think it's very fascinating. So, yes, I have in a very small manner. How about yourself, Tobias? Have you heard anything about it? Um, it's very interesting because uh, a long, long time ago, um, I may have been a little bit of a part of a magazine in Vancouver and may have done a little bit of an interview with people from the Falun Gong. <laughs> and, and I do know a little bit about it. Uh, nothing specific to them, though. Uh, but I think it's really fascinating how this relates to the things that we've already talked about in the first hour tonight. And here's why. Because whether it's uh, the healing devices or the chi field or the way we connect psychically and mentally through um, uh, these processes to different things or remote viewing or even what we were talking about before the break with exorcisms and interdimensional things, um, it's the same type of thing. When you and I, uh, when I participated in your class the other day, that was the thing that jumped out. The fact that I was not going to, you know, a memory of a past life for myself, even though it's a timeline integration, and uh, that was sort of the probably the purpose for it. <laughs> I didn't really do that. I, I literally uh, found myself projecting my mind, and I projected into a place that I found that I, I had forgotten about, uh, uh, and, and gained a lot of valuable insight and information into, into just the way my own mind works. But my point here is really this. When, when you're able to connect to, um, in, to your subconscious, when you're able to, to use the energies and the faculties that are associated with the, the psychic phenomenon across the board, you will understand that that when people say there is really no time the way you see it is actually very true. So even in the title of tonight's show, I alluded to time traveling. Well, this is the reason why. Because as much as you can remotely view something with your mind, uh, we can look at the moon, you know, and, and see what's on, on the moon, inside the moon. We can look inside people's bodies as with medical intuition. And we can look we can find the most incredible information within the body without even being near the person or let alone using a device or a machine. So the fact is, when we can do such incredible things with our minds when they're healthy and working properly, um, it's not a stretch to realize that you, yes, you can. You can project your mind into the future. You can project your mind into the past. And I'll tell you a little, tiny little bit of a story here, because uh, I just did this not too long ago. Um, I was working with a client, actually it was a friend of mine, rather than a, an actual client session, 
And he asked a simple question. He said, you know, what can you see me in the future? Can you see me in the future? Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I need sort of some guidance. And so I literally, um, well, I just imagined, um, I, I did what I do. I opened up my mind and I'm, you know, I sort of put the information there, uh, that I was going to look at the future and in, instantly I get a return. And it was fascinating because the return I got was an older version of this, this friend of mine. And, and as I relayed a bit of information that I understood from what I was seeing, the person in, in the so-called future turned his head and looked right at me. And it was just something that again reminded me this is not a figment of my imagination. This is not a figment of, of, you know, fantasy. Um, this person is a future person of reality somewhere. And this person, not only did I find them, but they turned their head and they recognized that I was there in a very real way. And I'll tell you another example. And it's funny because this is the same person that I was doing this with. Uh, he asked me one night if I could um, possibly connect to his timeless self to his higher self and get some information. And I mean, uh, I said, I, I said, you know, I can try to do that. I don't know how to do everything, but I certainly am willing to try a lot of things. So let's see what happens. So I mentally connected to this, this, this concept of his, his higher or timeless self. And almost instantly I had uh, a man in front of me. Uh, this is not physically in front of me. This literally is in my head. I see this clear, clear picture of this man in my head right in front of me, three-dimensionally, and he's wearing a tight, two-tone blue space-like suit. There's a logo on the front of it, and he's just beaming me this specific type of energy. And he didn't say anything. He didn't talk. He didn't, he just smiled at me. And, you know, a few minutes went by, and and he was just beaming me this energy. In fact, I, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but the type of energy he was beaming me was actually a feeling of love, like a strong, strong love energy. So I was trying to sort of, you know, get him to say something instead of just beam energy and try to get some information from it. Um, finally, after a few minutes, I said, okay, thank you. I'm, you know, I'm going to talk to, you know, my friend here who's on video in front of me. And I said to him, look, this is what, this is what was, was happening the last few minutes. And as soon as I said it, my friend says, Oh my God. He said, he, just a minute. I'll be right back. And he walked away and he came back to the camera with a, you know, like a 12 inch by eight inch drawing in full color of the man that I was just talking or you're communicating with, so to speak. Um, and he said, I just drew this last week. I was trying to draw my higher self, and I put my face on it. It was the exact same space suit. It had the logo on the front. It was blue. Everything about it was the same person. So this is just another example of these interdimensional, misunderstood, you know, sort of sometimes to people fantasy things that are a lot more than fantasy they're a lot more than projecting to a different place or a different time or or projecting, you know, your thoughts or your your focus. Um, these are very, very, very significantly real things. And, and the reason I love so much to talk about these things, uh, I love to talk about these things because people need to understand. They need these experiences. They need something to hang on to so that they can create these types of experiences for themselves. And if, if, if the whole world says, oh, that's, that's bogus. There's no such thing as aliens. There's no such thing as healing from a distance. You know, ha, 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 sure, Tobias. Then, then nobody, so many people are limited then. If, if, if the world and the dogmas and the programming and conditioning says, don't look at those things. That's ridiculous. I live these things every single day. And so do so many people around the world. And so do so many people I work with. And, and it just bears so much value. Um, especially when the things we're talking about are not to do with, you know, it's not like we're creating bad things. We're actually, well, learning and using things that are extremely helpful in healing, in, in, you know, in dealing with uh, things that make our faculties 
more powerful and more healthy and more normal. Because as, as we've talked about many times, these abilities and these experiences are quite normal. They're just not very normal in the world today. There's been so many things that have sort of, you know, polluted our minds and polluted our bodies and, and, you know, toxified things that it's, it's, it's a lot more work to get to the point where you can access these things or use them or make them even better or stronger, right? I'm not saying that I can do everything. No way. But what I'm saying is I would love, love to see more people, um, being able to use the practices that I do. Can you imagine that changes in the world? I'm serious. It's just, it's so much better because we can not only help ourselves, but then we can help other people. And this is really, I mean, we talk, I talk about, um, you know, my vision for the future. Well, this is my vision for the future because we can make things a lot better, a lot better. You know what a great feeling it is? For me to be able to sit in my office upstairs here in my house and push a button on my computer and be able to help you in America a thousand miles away or someone in Norway or Sweden or, you know, all of these places, California, Hollywood, all of these places, it's incredible. It's incredible. So if anybody ever wondered why Tobias loves talking so much, it's because it's, it's really, it's very, very exciting to me. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. There's, there, and so I, a couple of things. Um, cause this kind of ties in with uh, some of the comments that, uh, were coming through in earlier in the show. When we're talking about energy, we're actually talking about frequencies. So when we're doing those experiences that you just shared with everybody, it's because you're tuned in to someone's frequency. That's mm-hmm. what allows you to be able to remote view or to see what you see, to comprehend what you comprehend, it's tuning in to the frequencies. Uh, because if you were out of frequency, if you were not in the same frequency, you wouldn't be able to see that. You wouldn't be able to hear or sense or whatever because the frequencies wouldn't match. And that's what's the difference is between the different dimensionals, why we can't just walk around and see all the parallel dimensions that are right next to us that overlap us that sit on us but however you want to look at it because they vibrated at a different frequency but when we tune into certain things um it just clicks on and we're able to go in there and look at something because it shows itself because we are on the same frequency as whatever it is that we're looking at it's a it's a very interesting concept you talked a lot in my session about frequencies that's why i'm i'm bringing it up because it's it's about matching the frequencies, not necessarily uh, identical frequency, but enough to where you're able to see and understand and, and somewhat get the information that you need to get. So when we're talking about sending healing energy and, you know, doing remote viewing for the purpose of, you know, giving either information on something of, that's happened or uh, a, a health thing or a situation, whatever the case may be, when we're looking at that and we're sending that information back, we're, I'm sorry, we're kind of relaying that information back to whomever it is that we're having this conversation with, session with, this, and we're helping this person to heal. We can't heal anyone that isn't open to being healed. And normally what happens, Tobias, when you and I or anybody else that is in the same line of work, have somebody that comes forward to them, um, they're looking to have somebody assist them to open the door so they can heal themselves by accepting this wave of energy, this frequency, whatever it is, and they're willing to be healed. They want to be healed, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a codependency in that sense, but not if there is. We are all here to support each other and to assist each other. Uh, not one person can do it all by themselves, right? What you're doing when you send somebody information back, when you relay information back, is you're giving them a tool. You're explaining to them, this is how this is working, and this is what I'm doing, and this is what I saw, and this is how you can access it. 
you're giving them tools and you're and they themselves are allowing them to those tools to become a part of their kind of repertoire if it were right their mm-hmm. their modus operatus so that they're able to get in there and start helping themselves and that in turn helps them to grow and who knows who they're going to touch along the way this is about raising the frequency the vibration of the the human existence and the reason why most people, the the mainstream people, don't necessarily look at any of these things because they're so very busy doing. They're on a very specific time schedule that they're married to a clock and a schedule, a routine, a job, so much so that they don't take time out just to be themselves. It's about doing. I have to go to work, I have to come home, I have to fix dinner, I have to stop at the cleaners, I have to pick up the kids, I have to do this, I have to do that. I do, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Where is the time there that is spent not being part of that race, of that rat race, so to speak, where they just sit back and they go, for right now I'm going to meditate. I'm going to put my feet up, I'm going to meditate, I'm going to put some nice music on uh, or not have music, and I'm really going to get involved with myself how can i be more consciously aware and still get up in the morning and have to go and do my job i mean not everybody can just quit their job and not (laughs) just sit around and meditate right what a world that would be right but they can begin to add some things into their life that makes their life more rewarding than just that paycheck at the end of the week or the end of the month and how many Bobbles or toys or things that they can buy or pay on time or whatever the case may be, right? I mean, that's, that's the way this was structured. It was structured. Well, we've lost your audio, Rebecca. It was structured and there she goes. Well, and <laughs> oh, there I am. So there I you hit that mute, I hit that mute button again. You didn't. Really? It's been years. <laughs> <laughs> How I miss you. I miss you. I've missed you so much. You have no idea. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Okay, so now I was on my rant and I lost my train of thought, so we're just going to And it was structured. And I don't remember what I was saying after that. So you I said these it, rants. it was structured. Rebecca, you said it, the last thing was it, it was structured. Oh, it was structured that way to to keep us all busy. It and it's was, so it's it's so you go ahead. No, it's just it was it was it was if we're all so busy, then we cannot become who we really are. Yes, that's exactly it. It's so structured that people don't know how to unthink. And so, I mean, even in the practices, your practice, Rebecca, and my practice, I know that this is a common theme, a common thing that comes up. People often say, well, I want to do these things. I want to get more strong at these things and see these things more clearly. Um, and, and people often, they're like, how can I use my mind? You know, how can I see something? And so they meditate and they do these different wonderful practices that are very important. But even then, it's very um, challenging sometimes for them to to recognize um, what what they're supposed to be doing during that time. So what you're talking about structured, everything's structured. Sometimes we have to take apart that structure, and instead during a meditation, instead of 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 using our brain, we need to turn our brain off. Right. right. We need to destructure things a little bit. And I mean that's certainly the truth. I mean. It's a big deal. You know, I just want to sort of go into a deeper level with that uh, relating to meditation. With meditation, there's a couple of different types of, uh, a couple of different aspects to meditation. There's a relaxation meditation, and then there's an informational meditation, right? So it's very important that we train our bodies and our minds to slow down, train our thoughts to slow down and clear our heads. Now that's, that's a relaxation meditation right that's that type of practice but that's not the ultimate goal with meditation the ultimate goal is to be relaxed so that your body and mind can heal and experience that energy in that environment 
so that they can then, so that you that can then start hearing and receiving information about anything that you wish to hear about or connect to. Um, that is really the ultimate goal. And I find in our world today, um, a lot of people are missing the second part of that, right? Um, and even that goes into all of the things that we've discussed tonight, the energy, the technologies, um, the practices, the chi field, you know, interdimensional, um, quantum devices, because when we can calm our minds, then we can take our focus, as you were just alluding to, we can take our focus and apply it to anything at a distance, anything that we can conceive of within our mind, we can actually reach out with a thought and wrap around and sort of grab and connect to just with our mind. And then you get into that mode, you get into that headspace um, that, that I'm sort of just alluded to there with, uh, with meditation, where you're calm, quiet, you've quieted your thoughts, so you can actually listen and observe. And then information starts seeping into you. So this is what this is this is what the psychic phenomenon is and everything related to it. This is sort of a little bit of uh, the mechanisms uh, for which through which it works. And I love to be able to connect it to the technologies and the energy fields because um, here's the thing. I mean, even the quantum device that we've been talking about that I, I used with you the other day, that doesn't just work on uh, you know health issues. Of physical issues, um, these types of energies, these types of devices and frequencies um, can be set to literally enhance your mind, right? So, I mean, um, I we can certainly do that in a lot of different ways. I can do that with a crystal in my hand. I can uh, adjust literally the frequency in somebody's brain waves, and, and and that's not just me thinking, oh, that would be so cool and it sounds so great. I know that that's a science, and that's been established. Not well publicized, but it's certainly been established scientifically. I can take a quantum device, and I can send a frequency uh, that's the perfect match. It's the perfect scan to a naturopathic remedy. Everything has a frequency. The, the chair I'm sitting in, the, you know, the, the eye drops, you know, the, the, the ginger medicine or ginger tea, they've all got a frequency that can be recorded. You take that frequency, you put it into a software that's connected to a the energy field, and then you can transmit like a radio frequency, like a radio station. You can transmit that frequency to the person, no matter where they are. Now, when the body receives that frequency, it's actually going to react in much the same way as if they swallowed this medicine in, in through their mouth, because it's a, a, a an energetic duplication of the actual medicine. The body doesn't doesn't differentiate between the two. It recognizes it for what it is, and it, and it, it there is a reaction. Now this is you know energy medicine in a nutshell. It's not even that complicated. It it's not even that hard to imagine as real because it actually just makes sense. It's just that there aren't a lot of people out there talking about how these things work. And I, I mean, as for the the, the mental aspect of it, that this. The psychic aspect of it and the brainwaves aspect of it, you know, I, I think we hear more about, you know, you know, secret weapons and technologies that are targeting people and military things um, that sort of give information about these distant mechanisms that can be used by these authorities. We hear about that more than we hear about the, the same types of technologies that are being used for good purposes by well, by people like me, right? So I can take, I can take, um, any number of different energy devices, physical ones, you know, different ones, even in, in, in different dimensions, to be honest. And I can apply those and connect to those and use them to change real three dimensional environments within a person's body, within their mind. I mean, um, I can take it and make a person, you know, I can give a specific frequency for a person to learn languages better. I can, you know, we can change the frequencies of the mind to get better for mental processes or astral projections or remote viewing or or improved memory, um, telekinesis, mind projection, uh, uh, any of these things are specific frequencies. And I know a lot of people are already familiar with some of them. 
because the, you know, a common one is the, the Schumann resonance of the Earth, 7.83 hertz. People use that, uh, in different ways to sort of change your brain waves for meditation through sound a lot of the time. But there's things, um, beyond sound, beyond putting, uh, beyond putting earplugs in your ears and meditating, there's the same mechanisms through technologies as we're talking about through the chi field and remotely um, influencing things without touching them or being near them that that we can use to make ourselves better. And that's that's a big part of the practice um, in, in addition to the health standards that I, I do and use with people. Um, um, I teach people and... Uh, and help people sort of heal those abilities through different uh, processes as well. So it's uh, endlessly uh, fascinating to me, not only because of the subject, but because of the result, right? So, I mean, we have uh, so many of these things, all of the the topics that I'm talking about, and and you're discussing, Rebecca, we have, you know, psychic abilities and remote viewing and, and alien things and, 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 and that type of thing that is so, removed from so many people's grasp and then we 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 come here tonight and, and tobias says look it's not outside of your grasp <laughs> you you just haven't found the right things to, to to assist you yet and uh and it's the type of things is the quantum machinery the technology the energy machines uh, uh the psychic uh, sort of functions through all of these related topics that uh, uh that make it so worthwhile uh, for us to talk about because because it's more than the mainstream it's more than the backstream it's literally we're talking about things that can make a difference a real difference to uh, people and uh, again I don't want to sound like I'm running for president but I really believe that these things can change the world JP Tobias I need to tell you something because okay. it's been a few years right Several years ago, you got a device sent over to me, plus a few nice crystals, kyanites and things. Thank you <laughs> again once more. Oh, good. This device used a color frequency of 660 nanometers in a pulsed form, uh, applied across, across a grid of something like 100 or so LEDs, maybe more, maybe 200 yes. LEDs. Um Originally meant as a display, uh, you know, just one of these little marquee displays that you get in a little shop. Um, but you could program this to um, uh, pulse healing frequencies. So I took that idea. Um, and, uh, you know, over the years, the technology of LEDs has developed, and you can get really quite super bright, 660s these days. Um, yes. And uh, a couple of years ago, I achieved my um, my dream, right? Which was, it was basically to combine this technology with Shari Edwards' uh, sound technology or frequency technology and um, create a device that you could pre-program that would pulse this frequency of light at the frequency that uh, that your body is needing um and you can either it can either go as a pair of sunglasses you know it'll pulse like that um and of course you can use it uh as one of those dream machines um you just use the right frequencies yep. um and uh or you could um uh, apply it as a i have a wand as a, a, a electroacupuncture wand applying that frequency directly into the body on the acupuncture point um i also made a laser one i mean it's just like i made a prototype thing um, but, uh, I just wanted to, um, uh, tell you where I'd got on it because it's, uh, um, wow. it's part of a device I believe that will help to cure or at least not cure. I'm not allowed to use the word cure anymore. Um, to fix, I don't know, to ameliorate PTSD, which is what we all need. We, we've all been PTSD'd, you know, we've all got post-traumatic oh. stress. Uh, and that's a whole other story. <laughs> that's like, it's a long, oh, we got a lot to catch up with. Very, very cool, JP. And, and that is exactly uh, what I'm talking about. These things, there's, you know what, again, that again relates to, um, the same types of things, uh, processes. Um, not completely the same because I'm doing it through the chief field. So it's, I mean, we don't literally even have to have a light or a sound in our head, uh, to affect it. 
Um, but yes, absolutely, super powerful, incredible things that should absolutely be more widespread in use, um, but aren't. Very exciting. And I know Sherry Edwards. I know Sherry's work is incredible. You know, for many years, Sherry's been out there on the path trying to, you know, get the word out. You know, and it's it's hard to do. It's hard to do because of all of these other other reasons. But it's the same thing, whether it's a light going into your cells or at a certain frequency, 660 in the case of the red LEDs, uh, nanometers, um, or a sound, which is obviously a frequency. Um, a color is a frequency. Um, or the frequency itself of something scanned and projected through the chi field or even, even metal, metal devices you have in your hands or bands around your wrist that put pulse the frequency into your body it makes no difference. They all have an effect, a physical effect. So if you couple these things, if you couple these things with the knowledge and the information and the accurate, uh, data, um, that you need to um, treat specific things, whether that be, as you said, PTSD or ADHD or, or, uh, you know, making someone more psychic or giving someone the ability to release serotonin in their, you know, in their body or, or gosh, counteracting a hangover. Who cares? All of these things, uh, all of these things, um, are tools, powerful tools that we can use and, uh, you know what? Isn't it something that there's so few people um, in this world that have access to them, um, you know, on a widespread scale? It just doesn't happen. But nonetheless, uh, this is what we keep talking about, and this is exactly the reason why, why, uh, you know, I do everything I do. It's so very, very, uh, well, it's so gratifying to know that at least we're doing something. At least we're doing something uh to make things better and different well uh my my uh, belief is is that at some point that the scale will be more balanced of what we call western medicine versus um, all other types of we'll call it alternative medicine it's not really alternative it was here before the pharmaceuticals and you know, the medical doctor thing and all the specialists and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. and I think it's, I think it's, it's been slower than what m- most of us would appreciate, obviously. And I know JP will remember my guest, James Honeycutt. Uh, he was another one that was on my show. Um, and he has the Clarius machine. He's the one that, uh, come in and, and he's patented, um, medical and, help devices that you plug into your wall. It helps with your EMF. It can help with sleep. It can help with um, meditation. It help, you know, whatever you need, it can help with it. Um, he's got a whole bunch of new devices out. Uh, he was on just last year. I had him on uh, when I was on Project Camelot shortly for a short period of time. Um, that can be seen on the YouTube channel, Project Camelot, Camelot TV. Uh, my interview with uh, James Honeycutt for people that might want to go and do some research on some of his technologies, healing technologies and health technologies uh, that he's patented as well. So these things are just all valuable. And, uh, you know, when I first started out uh, um, doing all of my work, the work that I did, it started out with just using energy, just pure unadulterated energies. I began... um adding, you know, crystals and different stones and stuff for different healing practices, uh, you know, working with people in their auric field and their energy field and balancing them. Uh, you can get to the point where you can get really good. You get real sensitive to energy shifts and changes within uh, the environment when you're working on someone. So it's an extremely valuable thing to do because then you can also get good enough to where you kind of scan your own self um, I still haven't perfected that, I can tell you that, but I, I still do. I still work on scanning myself uh, to see where I'm at, and I can, if I feel things are not right, uh, then I try to take steps, and I usually do most of that either when I'm taking a bath or just before I go to bed. I always plan on, on doing some kind of work on myself before I go to sleep. I call it work. It's not really work. It's joyful for me. 
um, it's second nature to me. Like, um, it, 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 it has, it's just become second nature. It's just something that I do. Um, I think we'll begin to see more and more of these technologies come through, um, because we're also seeing technologies that are mirrored in, you know, the regular world, which is solar panels uh, have been outdated and they've been replaced by different types of solar um, apparatus, you know, for alternative energy, um, what people can do to actually pull water out of the air so they can have water for places that are filled with drought. Um, and these are, these are all energy things that, that devices that don't use fossil fuels in order to work, right? Mm-hmm. So we're beginning to see more and more acceptance of alternative to the status quo. So as we look at the, the regular world out there, the, the world that operates out there and there, and you know, how we uh, energize our houses and our cars and all of that. Uh, electric cars um, are become, I mean, even in the local Walmarts, they've got places where you go and plug in your car at, um, you know, and live in a very, very remote little part of the country, right? And so, you know, you've got all these places that have all these different things. Um, eco-friendly um, is another one. And, and they use things that save on using fossil fuels is, is more of a backup than it is the mainstay of either supplying lights or heat or cooling, depending on what's needed. It's just, it's just, it's good to see that it is making its way slowly to the surface and we're seeing a little bit more of the alternative healing and health practitioners, um, being given a little bit more credence. So the work that you do and the work that I do in JP and people like us, um, I think it, it's, it's, getting a little easier for people to reach out. They have more availability to research and to look at, well, this I've tried this for this way so many years. What else is available to me? And there will be things that will happen for them that will be more holistic, more natural, uh, maybe even just energetics. So I'm hopeful for that, J- um, uh, Tobias. I really am. I really, really am. Um, hopeful that this is really going to become more of the mainstay than the exception to the rule, for sure. Absolutely. Um, Too to slow, though. To do that is, well, it is slow because there's so many things. There really are things that oppose it. There, the, you know, on, on so many levels. Like, here's the thing, look. I mean, I, I spend, you know, a little bit of time on Facebook and on social networks, you know, shamelessly trying to self-promote information about these things and you know what people have are absolutely desensitized to information because there's so much out there and not only that um not only do they find it hard to know what to believe um or know what actually is different than or more powerful information so to speak than just the other stuff that's floating around out there not only that uh does that make it difficult? But the fact that the social networks, YouTube, Facebook, these uh, these companies, <laughs> these networks, they are using algorithms that are suppressing information. Um, for example, even for the show tonight, even for the show tonight, I put out, um, I think, 1,600 invitations. And out of all 1,600, only uh, about 250 people actually saw the invitation. Um, and of course then you have the statistics that a lot of people aren't interested or don't don't know if they'll make it and so you have a very small number, a very reduced number based on algorithms um, that are no coincidence. <laughs> uh, the algorithms to to sort of suppress the amount of information that is free flowing, right? So I'm not talking about a conspiracy against, you know, what we're talking about. I'm just saying the conspiracy is against freedom of flowing information. So when we can get um, onto Revolution Radio or Wolf Spirit Radio and, and uh, you know, actually have people that are, are listening to us talk about these things, it is a phenomenal feat. I really, really mean that. Um, it's a big deal because, again, because 
this is not something that the you know the those that influence this world um, would would have us do easily. So I mean, it, it's a very very exciting thing to me. And as you know, as I alluded to you or alluded to with you before the show tonight, Rebecca, it doesn't matter if there's you know two people or two hundred thousand people um, listening to what we're doing. Um, I always uh, approach it from the same perspective as if I'm on coast to coast with a, an audience of 10 million people. And uh, I, I just appreciate it. Uh, I value it so much because this is what we've got to do. We've got to do this. We've got to. It's my passion. Yeah. And, and, and besides being your passion, it, it is, it is your life in a sense. Yes. And, and you know, and, and I have to say that you know, it's, it's more than a wonderful feeling. I don't even know if there's a word to express it when you can live your passion. Um, it's being part of your authentic self. You're showing who you are. You're out there. And that's the most valuable thing that you can do and to be is your authentic self. And as you grow, it becomes your more authentic self. The more pieces of your puzzle that you can figure out, the wider and the deeper that you can go, the more authentic you become with who you are in your life and the reality of what it really is. That's so exactly right and so nicely said. And I mean, here's the thing, and I, I relay this, I relate this to people uh, quite often. I say, look, I, I know we live in this world that is full of craziness. Um, some of the things that I work with and deal with are even crazier than most people want to look at. <laughs> Trust me, I, I guarantee that. But, but the thing is, I still love what I do. I, I wake up every day with a, with a good feeling in my soul and my heart. Um, I look forward to it. I make fun. I make fun of things. I make fun in my life because, uh, because there really is reason for hope. There really is reason for hope. So as crazy as some of the things um, that I talk about sound and 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 as is, is, is crazy as some of the things that I, I work with and deal with every day are, um, I still look forward to everything because, again, you know, not to sound like a broken record, but um, it's through these types of practices and knowledge and, and information and understanding that, that we can really change the world. And, and I, I'll say one thing. There's not a whole lot of things or people out there actually changing the world. Because, again, we started we started the show tonight actually talking about being comfortable and secure, right? And a part of that, that, that drive for security is to sort of keep things the same. And that's what uh, sort of the people that like to sort of manipulate the, you know, the way the things go in the world, they, they would like us to take that need for stability and, uh, and use it to make sure that we don't get into new things or ancient things for that matter. And, uh, I'm not willing to keep it that way because.